Hi guys and welcome to this week's video. I'm in this pretty special place. I remember the first time I came here. I remember that feeling of excitement. And I've been back quite a few times since. And that feeling is still there. You have no idea how excited I am about this week's video. That branch keeps poking me in the ear. <laughs> so coming up in this video, I'll talk you through the gear I'm gonna be using to photograph the birds in flight. And also, the camera settings that I choose to use. They might not necessarily be the settings that you would choose to use. Can you even see me because that light? They might not necessarily be the settings that you would choose to use to shoot birds in flight, but they're my preferred settings. You never know, you might even like them yourself. Middle of the week, out of season, and just about every car parking space is taken, and there's coaches here as well. This is incredibly busy. Hello. Hello, you okay? Yeah, fine, thanks. Welcome to Bempton Cliffs, where nature paints its own masterpiece. A natural wonderland where land meets sky in a symphony of life. One of nature's greatest spectacles. So this is the incredible Bempton Cliffs. And I think people are getting excited, maybe a little bit prematurely, about the puffins coming back to land, to nest, to breed. It's a little bit early as far as I know. It's only May and June time when you can see the puffins, but still, it doesn't matter. You know, it's just such an incredible place. The main platform viewing area up there is packed full of people. But if you do come to a place like this, it is immense. There are so many amazing vantage points to photograph the birds. Oh, I need this as a point of reference. I really do. Puffins, the gannets are incredible to photograph. The gannets there, they're huge. It's something like a six foot wingspan. They are, they're my favorites. They're absolutely gorgeous. So all of that, perhaps not the puffin today, but all of that, is what I'm looking forward to photographing. As you approach the sea, I'm gonna head as far right as I possibly can and work my way down. Try and go to somewhere quiet, possibly even like here, just to explain about the gear I'm using and the settings I'm choosing to use, just to get that out of the way right at the beginning of the video. So let's talk about the gear that I'm using today. I'm using the Nikon Z8 with the one to 400 mil lens. I think that's more than sufficient in a place like this because we're fairly close to the birds, even though lots of times they're quite far out at sea when we're photographing. Having said that though, the images produced by cameras nowadays means that you can crop right in. So Z8 accompanied with the one to 400 mil lens. And with regards to camera settings, I have a favorite that I prefer to use, which is camera set to manual, aperture set around about 5.6 or F8, fairly open. Now with regards to the shutter speed, birds in flight, in theory demands a fast shutter speed, and that's what I'm opting for today. But later on, when I know I've got quite a few bankers in there, then I'll be slowing that shutter speed down and panning with the birds at around about 100 or 200 of a second. If you can nail a good panning shot, then as far as I'm concerned, they're always the best ones to have in the bag. And the third setting, the ISO, of course, I set that to automatic. And the reason why I set my ISO to automatic is because that could take care of any fluctuating light whilst panning with the birds. The camera is set to Gatling gun modes and I've opted for 15 frames a second in RAW. The camera can shoot up to 20 frames per second. And of course in JPEG, it can shoot anything up to 120 frames per second. Focusing, I've set my camera to AFC and it's got a bird tracker on here as well. So I've opted for for a bird tracker back button focus but also the button on the front there I've set that to 3d because I like shooting between 3d 
and the bird tracking and I'm gonna I'm gonna test that more extensively today when I'm done the Mac loop photographing jets when the jets first enter the valley they're quite a way off and I tend to find that the camera works best by using the 3d tracking focus on it so in other words I've got a point of focus in the center of the frame I place it on the jet I press my shortcut button which is here and that tracks the jet as it comes into view and as it gets closer I then use the back button focus which takes over the focusing using the aircraft setting that's what I prefer to use when I'm down at the Mac loop and I'm gonna use that set in here and find out how I get on and I'll let you guys know of course towards the end of the video how not only did the camera perform but what settings I preferred the lighting is incredibly harsh today 100% cloud cover apparently hmm right and as a bonus and it's something that I'm excited to try out definitely and that is I'm going to be filming quite a few of the birds in slow motion this camera has a 4k setting at 120 120 that means on a 30 frame per second film which is what I always film at I can slow the birds down in flight times four so you get that gorgeous buttery slow motion effect and that is something I'm super excited about trying out in this video as well. With the camera set up, it's time to start filming and taking countless images. Ah. Take two. And this is the reason why I currently film using a GoPro. Capturing birds in flight is an incredibly challenging task, yet it's astonishing just how rapidly you grasp their flight patterns. When coupled with the remarkable slow-mo features of the camera, you actually begin to resemble someone who knows what they're doing. Well, <laughs> sort of. I tell you what, full kudos goes out to anybody that films wildlife for a living because these birds are so erratic. I'll show you on my iPhone what these birds are like in flight, but with a one to 400 mil lens on, especially at 400 mil, it's just crazy, even though their flight path is very predictable. It is so, so, so difficult. I mean, you must have to put hours and hours and hours into filming just to come away with some really cool video clips. Definitely one thing I would recommend, put your strap on. I hate having straps. I never ever use my straps. The only time I ever use straps is maybe when I shoot in a wedding and I've got two camera bodies. That's the only time I'll ever put a strap on my camera. But tell you what, I wish I had my strap with me today because even though I've got a firm grip, I'm leaning over here aiming down and shooting and of course that's probably a, a hundred foot cliff there and nothing surviving that nothing now you can take what I'm about to say with a pinch of salt and the reason why I'm saying that is because I'm sponsored by Nikon and so is the channel but I'm new to the family and I'm new to the Z8 but I honestly expect it to turn up and start dithering around with my focus settings. But honestly, I put it straight to AFC, which is constant focusing, and I've set it to the bird I detect. And the thing is obscene. Honestly, it hasn't skipped a beat. Incredible, absolutely incredible. It's a great viewing area, this, isn't it? Look at that for landscape photography. 
Forget birds, look at that. Wow. If you look carefully, just down there, there's a shipwreck. Apparently it's a, an old coal ship that ran aground about a hundred years ago. Something like, um, I think she said the name was the SS Radian or something. I shall check it up before I make this video and, and put it up on the screen. But uh, apparently it ran aground about a hundred years ago during a storm and everybody escaped, everybody. Apparently the locals come down and run ropes down the cliff just there. And everybody survived it. But the tide's out at the moment, so you can't see any more of the shipwreck than what you can currently see. That's cool, isn't it? So I've been here for about half an hour or so, taking pictures and a, a few video clips. But of course, I'm just videoing the same birds doing the same things and taking pictures of the same birds doing the same things. Obviously, just like I thought earlier, it's too early for the puffins. I'm uh, probably a month too early for the puffins. They're here April, May, June time. But what I'm going to do while I'm here, just really to have a play around with the camera. I've set the camera to the, the maximum it could shoot at in terms of capturing raw images, which is 20 frames per second. And I'm just gonna rattle off a few bursts just to let you guys see how, how this camera performs, really. Because honestly, it's one thing saying it, but showing you guys the results, of course, is another thing. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, I'm gonna try one more thing before I pack up and head home. I'm gonna slow my shutter speed down and try a few panning shots. Very difficult to nail, but if you do manage to nail one, then there'll be, there'll be shots that you'll cherish forever. Oh, what a thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyable afternoon. If you've never been here before, I, I can't recommend it highly enough. It's not a sponsored video or anything at all like that. I just enjoy coming here. Easy to get to, easy to walk out and great viewing areas, even if you're not so hot on your feet. If you have mobility issues, it's great as well. Now things here are gonna heat up because people love seeing puffins. Like I say, April, May and June, this place is gonna be busy. I normally go to the Fan Islands to see the puffins, if you would prefer to see puffins up close and you're not afraid of jumping on a boat and paying a little bit of money, they're not too expensive, then I would suggest that you go to the Fan Islands as well. Puffins are superb. And one last thing, my favorite vlogger, yes, I do have a favorite vlogger, is this man here called Steve Mathis. I have to apologize to Steve because I got hold of his book 
probably 12 months ago now it's still a current edition and it is incredible i do like my wildlife photography and i've read this book from back to front Catherine guru he's written it in collaboration with her and she knows birds inside and out so you get a double feel of a photography and b real life nature that book is highly highly recommended and if you've never checked out steve mathis before i'll leave a link to his channel down below as well and nothing is sponsored and he hasn't asked me to mention his book but he'll hate me for saying this but he is my number one youtube vlogger i've never missed a video of his ever and that book once again i cannot speak any more highly of this book treat yourself so as always do me a favor help support the channel give that like button a bit of a nudge and if you're new here and you want to find your way back then consider subscribing as well until the next time guys